This is a single cell. It's a parasite called Trypanosoma brucei. And this child is currently host to several million of them. The parasite is transmitted by the bite of the tsetse fly. It'll go on to cause a condition called African sleeping sickness. It's a very serious disease, often with a fatal outcome. In 2008, around 48,000 people died in an epidemic of this disease. In the sub-Saharan regions where the disease is endemic, there are few medical resources available and current treatments with arsenic-based drugs are both long and difficult to administer and can have very severe, sometimes fatal, side effects. The bad news for this girl is that due to her poverty, there's simply no profit to be made for commercial pharmaceutical companies from developing a better therapy for this condition. African sleeping sickness is truly a neglected tropical disease. But now there is some better news. Far from Africa, in Dundee, Scotland, the University of Dundee College of Life Sciences holds one of the world's leading centers of excellence dedicated to understanding the causes of neglected tropical diseases and developing breakthrough therapies. The Drug Discovery Unit was started in 2006 and has rapidly become established as one of the world's centers for creating therapies for parasitic disease. Through a mixture of academic and industrial research methodology and technology, the center has developed a process designed to encompass each stage necessary to create the drugs so desperately needed for the treatment of awful conditions like sleeping sickness, malaria, and leishmaniasis. They call it the Drug Discovery Pipeline. It starts with the search for a way of disrupting the parasite's metabolism. Leading specialists in parasite biology at the University of Dundee collaborate with many other institutions across the world to identify and validate targets suitable for this research. This is done at a molecular level by understanding the structures of the proteins within the parasite's cells. The test is to find a target molecule that's unique to that organism or sufficiently different from our own. If it's possible to produce a drug compound which can successfully interfere with this target molecule alone, then the parasite may cease to function with no detrimental effects to the patient. This research is done by chemists who look at the structure of the target molecule and try to find its Achilles heel any essential chemical structure within the target that's not shared by its human host. The chemists work with biologists to identify possible chemical compounds which may interfere with this target. This is a cyclic process based on high throughput screening. The drug development unit has a library of 100,000 compounds and a range of these are chosen to be introduced to samples of the target molecules by robotic screening machines. Many thousands of chemical interactions are carried out with this sophisticated machinery and the reactions of each individual test are recorded by computer to find the compounds that have had some effect on the target. Of the many thousands of chemical compounds screened in this way, only a very few will have had any effect. These then become the starting point of further research. The results are carefully analyzed and the biologists and chemists work together to identify the most powerful compounds. Then restructure and refine these chemical starting points to optimize the effects on the target molecule. The process is repeated over and over again. This cycle of analysis, testing and reanalysis is at the heart of the drug discovery pipeline. Once the chemical compound has been developed to a potentially useful potency against the target, it's passed to the Drug Metabolism and Pharmacokinetics group, who begin to measure its drug-like properties. The compound has to be stable enough to be taken into the human body, to withstand digestion in the gut, and produce the therapeutic effect without any toxic effects on the patient. This selecting of target molecules, research into their structures, screening, and refining of the chemicals which will have the desired effect 
and production of a compound which will work safely in the human body is a time-consuming and hugely expensive process. At the top end of the pipeline, there are many candidates put forward as potentially interesting target molecules. But through good science and much experience, the drug discovery unit at Dundee has developed a rigorous system of identifying the best target candidates and will only allow the most promising candidates to be developed. The strength of the drug discovery unit at the University of Dundee comes from the constant dialogue and cooperation between the wide range of specialists who work side by side. From strong academic research right through to industrial experience, every aspect of drug discovery is represented within this one building. The implications of current research at the drug discovery unit are immense. The world-class biochemical work being done here is beginning to open doors not only on neglected tropical diseases, but also on the understanding of many other conditions such as cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease and many skin conditions. The reality in Dundee is that here is a place where academia meets industry. The unit attracts passionate scientists and researchers who want to work in applied science in an environment that will provide real benefits to the world. They find themselves in a well-resourced, exciting and growing facility where collaboration and synergy are core principles. Which is indeed good news for those in the world who, until now, had little hope.